Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can create a pause menu for any level of our game. And to make things a little bit different this time, I'm going to be instantiating the uh, the menu as a prefab rather than having it set as an object that's in the hierarchy by default. So in other words, we're not going to be putting the uh, menu inside of the scene directly inside of a canvas, but we're actually going to use a manager script that we'll create in order to instantiate that menu on demand from our prefab, which we have stored in the assets. So I think this should be quite in depth and probably will be across a few videos, but hopefully you guys will learn a lot from it. Now, before we can instantiate a prefab, we of course have to create it. So I'm going to create a new panel inside of the scene hierarchy. And this is just temporary, of course. We're going to be removing it from the hierarchy and storing it only as a prefab in our assets slash prefabs folder. But for right now, we'll have this panel, which automatically assigns a new canvas when one does not exist inside of the scene. So I'm also going to assume that you don't want your new pop-up menu to take the full game screen. So one way that you can control its sizing would be to have it stretch, but then to give it padding, but then to give it margins on each side. So if we give it a margin of 100 pixels on all directions, or maybe just 50 for the top and bottom when we're working at such a low resolution, we can have it stretch to most of the screen, but leave a little bit of our game hiding behind it. So next I'm going to rename this panel to pause menu to better define what it actually is supposed to do. And now we'll add a couple more UI components to this. So I'll create a panel here and I'll drag this panel to the top and I can drag the margin for this panel up towards the top so that it only takes this little top sliver. And under that, I can add in a text component for a title for this window. And we can say this is pause in all caps and center it so that it's very clear that the game is paused. It might also increase the size or check best fit in order to make better use of that space that's up there. And we can rename this panel to be top bar. Now inside of this pause menu, I'm going to also want to create a new empty and with this empty, we're going to call this the layout scheme. And the only purpose of this is to organize our button components that will go beneath it. So an add component, I can type in, uh, let's see, layout, and we'll do a vertical layout group. So now as we add new buttons to this layout scheme, it's going to be ordering them in terms of the space available with its parent component. And you can see here the bounds of the parent, which we probably actually want to stretch at least horizontally and probably expand its space to make up the full use of everything beneath the top bar. Um, now we can just duplicate a few more buttons here, making sure that the parent is the layout scheme. And the layout scheme will take care of determining where they should go. Um, a couple options you can control here are the uh, child force expand, which will remove some of that spacing between them. But if you want to set a specific amount of space, you can do that with spacing. And we'll set the child alignment to be upper center and add 25 pixels padding on all directions just to make it look a little nicer. Now another thing we're going to want for the top bar is going to be a close window button or a resume game button. Um, you can determine for yourself how you want this to be placed, but I'm going to just put it as an X in the top right hand corner over here. And for the text, I'll change that to X. Uh, you could also change the image on the button component itself if you want something looking a lot nicer than just a little piece of text there, but that'll serve for right now. Another little piece of information we can add to the pause menu might be a text that tells the player that tells the player that they can hit X or escape to resume and we'll stretch that horizontally as well. Anchored to the bottom, of course. If you have this situation where your background's kind of dark, it's probably better to change the color to white, for instance. And if you have any other fonts in your project, like Kenny Bold, you can change to that if you think that looks nicer than the default Arial. For the record, the Kenny font pack is actually free to use CC0 license, I believe. So if you want to take a look at that for uh, kind of more gamey looking fonts, definitely Google search that and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Also center this text element horizontally and now that makes it a little bit more clear. 
So let's label what these buttons actually do, both in the hierarchy and the text component itself. So the first button is going to be, let's just say save game. We won't actually write a save game script in this video, but uh, we'll have it there as a placeholder. So the next one will be, um, you could say hence, that's something I see some games do where they might have like a hence menu there. Uh, of course, hence can also spoil the game, but you know, it's one option to have. And then of course, quit to main menu. And what this button will do is basically go back to our default scene. Currently it's called sample scene in uh, my folders here, but I'm gonna rename that to main menu to make it a lot more clear. So let's rename these buttons in the hierarchy as well. So I will call this button quit to main menu. This one will be uh, button hence. And this one will be button save game. Okay, so now we can save this entire pause menu as a prefab. I'm gonna drag that into our hierarchy and I'm gonna delete it from the scene. 